And we're back. Welcome to part two of The Joy of Gaslands, where uh, you've got two cars here. This is Banana Man. This is Mr. Blue. Uh, Mr. Blue has five hazard tokens. He's got four. He's got two points of damage. He's got... I can't remember. That's why I marked it. He's got three points of damage, and we're just doing a regular dogfight here. If you drive over this chip, you can heal two points of damage, which is probably a mistake because it's making this game take a lot longer than I expected it to. Be that as it may, we are in first gear, and Mr. Blue needs to divest himself of some hazard tokens. So he's going to go straight medium and get rid of one. He would also like to get rid of some hazard tokens, but he's got the problem of needing to severe a weight. They're both in third gear, by the way. That's what the orange dice is for here. And that veer means he's going to slide up to here. In third gear, the veer is nothing, but at least it keeps him off the wall. And if he can get over there, maybe he can reset his blemage. Uh, the turnover, so that's uh, the first gear, second gear. Starts to move quick after a little while, just a little turn, that's perfectly safe. And a uh, nice gentle turn here. Puts him in a line like he wants to do, and in third gear, that's fine. He doesn't pick up a shift, but he doesn't need to. He's really gunning for that heel. He's going to go ahead and ride a medium, ba bump bum now this, the greenery is a hazard, for those of you that missed the last episode. The greenery is a hazard, the curbs are not. If you're on the black asphalt, you can re-roll your skid checks, but you have to be on the asphalt. This has to be on the asphalt the entire time. If you're just on the gray, it's not a hazard, but you don't get to re-roll your skid checks. Two, two, and let's see, one, two, one, two. And now we're on to number three. Oh, it's a windy night. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. He's in third gear, and he's lugging a lot of hazards around, but he really needs that heal, and he really needs to not run into the building or pick up any more, so we're going to call it a turn. And we're going to erase the two points of damage. These are regular cars, by the way. They've got a front mounted machine gun, and that's about it. That was three, and that's the end of the turn. Uh, one, two, three. Yep, that's the end of the turn. So we go to one, and our green is the pole position token. So he can turn in third gear. Oh, probably should have done a gentle turn. That's all right. And we're going to do a little turn here, and that's the end of number one. Okay, a little bit of an edit there. Uh, I moved him twice. That's not kosher, man. That's not cool. That's going to make a big difference because you got to move. He's got pole position. He has to move first in each, each uh, phase. So he's going to rush ahead. That's the medium. And that buys him the one free shift. And more importantly, he now has a chance to there's your line of sight he does not have a shot he is also going to blast ahead medium and buy himself one of these and because of his position he just barely has a handgun shot that's it which does him no good so then we move up to number three and on the third round we're gonna do a gentle turn in third gear which should put us bang on right there for a t-bone attack he's attacking he's evading we're still in third gear so that third man alive is this a game of bumper cars um t-bone means third gear. Two points of damage. He is evading. To no avail, he takes two more points of damage. More importantly, they both take... So there's two points, so he's half dead at this point. 
but they are both sitting on five hazard tokens. So we really need to start hammering those skid checks. If only in a hunt for free shifts. Uh, he would fire a gun, except that he is very distracted by the fact that he just bonked off of somebody. And that somebody is going to have to turn. In third gear, a simple turn is a straightforward matter. And he's going to... Now, the template and him are both on the granite. So he gets a free reroll. That's but he doesn't need it. He's gonna cancel and he's gonna buy one of those. And that is the end of the turn. So pole position shifts over to there. And this drops back down to first gear. Blue has pole position. And he's going to do a hairpin turn like that. And he's going to roll all three dice because he's got the one to play with. And honestly, he's hoping for a slide. Now, that's going to be a problem because he doesn't need two slides and a whole bunch of hazards. He's going to take the free reroll. And... That result is, for those of you using the old school dice, two spins to rotate up to 90 degrees. That's exactly what he needed. He can negate that hazard, and then he eats a hazard because he is doing a spin. But he moves to here, and he can spin up to 90 degrees. So he's going to do that. And now he is all lined up for a shot with his machine guns. Chaka, 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 cha. And he gets a one big hit. He's going to roll to evade. And he gets nothing. So that is his first point of damage. And that worked out. Well, that could be interesting. He's going to, he says, you know, you're a funny guy. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make, th oh, you know what, though? That hairpin damage. Oh, wait a second. I think I screwed up because that hairpin gives him a hazard. I think he should have wiped out completely. I think he should have completely spun out and been distracted and not been able to get that shot off. Lord help me. For such a simple game, I might be rushing through it. It might be a little more complicated than I thought. These car race games are crazy complicated. He, man, he doesn't dare do that. He already called it. So he's got to do a spin check. And he's got no hope. So, okay. So I should have spun him out. Eh, forgive me. Whatever. We're figuring it out. Uh, because that becomes his... Well, it's not too late. It's not too late. Okay. And now, because this movement template adds a sixth hazard token to him, he has to resolve the wipeout step. So, first things first. We've got to do a flip check. He is in third gear, and that means he has to roll a d6. You have to roll equal to or higher than, so on a one or a two, he flips over. So he does not flip. Uh, and then he moves... Ahead, medium straight, which puts him right there. Wait, is that seriously? Uh, the flip check has failed. Move medium straight. Nope. So we don't do that because we didn't flip. But we do reduce his gear to one. So guess what? You're done for the turn there, buddy. Remove all hazards. Well, that could come in handy. And then he gets to decide which way you're facing. So he says, guess what? You are going to be facing that direction in gear one. Good luck with that. Then, because that was he's in pole position, he 
gets to make a maneuver. And having seen, man, boy, it sure would be nice. You know, he's dumb enough, and we've been going at this a long time. That's going to give him, he's going to do the same thing. He's going to make a hard turn. He's going to make his skid check. He only gets one roll, because he doesn't have the chance. Two hazards, a four, so he can cancel one of those out. But he picks up two, so he is now at seven hazards. So he comes around this way. Oh, he doesn't even get the shot off. And then he's going to be in trouble, too. He's got to make a flip check. Does he have any shots? Does he have any shots? He does not. He doesn't even have his handgun. So now he's got to make a flip check. And he does. Again, in third gear, that would be a one or a two. And, you know, he can make that. He can make that. But, the again, the issue here is that he says, yeah, you know what, that's funny. I'm going to put you facing straight into the wall there, too. Uh, would he put him into the wall or facing around that way? Put him into the wall because they're going to start. That's the end of the turn. Yellow goes to pole position. We're still in first gear. How about that? Hmm. So in first gear... The only thing you can do is go in reverse. You don't see a lot of reverse in this game. All right, so when you're in first gear, you put the template behind you. You move backwards. In first gear, there's no hazard on that one. And you can stick shift. So he's going to go ahead and take the hazard to move up to second gear. You got to do it. Uh, he's going to do the same thing, except he has he has learned from his example, and rather than doing the hairpin turn, he's just going to make a regular old turn, regular old hard turn that puts him right there, and it is free to do. So he gets the free shift, and he can move up to second gear for free. That's from an old movie. Don't worry about it. Uh, now we're in second gear, and he gets to go, and he's going to go ahead and make that turn. He's going to bump up over that. In second gear, that turn is free. He wants to shift up one. He's going to go ahead and do the thing. That cancels that out, and that cancels the shift, so he bumps up to third gear, and now he is ready to rock. He also has has Mr. Blue lined up, as you can see, if we put this right there in the double, so he gets to take a shot with his machine gun. And he gets one hit. He's going to evade. He's only in second gear. At, oh, wait, the six is two hits. He avoids one. That puts him at only four hull points remaining. But it's his turn. And he says, Mister, I may only be in second gear, but, uh-oh. Uh-oh. I'm going to try and hit you. And so we put it down, and he comes up just short. He's in second. The, well, the blue, yeah, he's done. The only good news for him is that he gets to try and reciprocate with a machine gun attack. And he gets one hit, and in third gear he gets three evades, and he gets, well, that's a critical hit for two points, but that's two evades. No, that's no evades. So he at least takes two points of damage. And now it's his turn, and you can see what happens next. That is a head-on collision. That, hmm. All right. So, smash attack. And we're gonna need we're gonna need one more die for this. So since yellow is smashing him, he's gonna we're gonna roll for him first. He's gonna roll six dice. It's three plus three because it's a head-on attack. And yellow does two, four, six, seven, eight, nine points of damage, which he can only negate and none of them, so he's done for. On the other hand, blue is going to smash, and he only rolls two points of damage, which Banana Man doesn't avoid either of them.
but that's okay. Two for him, and enough to blow him up. I, I guess technically I should have laid this out. He's going to move to there, and that's where he ends. Mr. Blue is now wrecked. So, when a vehicle is wrecked, move short straight to there. And then, collision window, remove the hazard check, becomes a wreck, check for explosion, none of that applies. That's the end of the game. Banana Man has pulled off, uh, not quite the upset, but he's pulled off the win through enough dogfighting that both drivers just said, let's end this here and now, and went straight at each other. Uh, I think this game takes a lot longer than I expected. i got to be honest with you. Uh, with just the two cars, uh, I wound up getting a full couple of episodes out of it. It's a nice light beer and pretzels game if you've got a handful of guys and you can whip through it pretty quick. But fundamentally, it's still a game that takes, it's going to take you a couple of two, three hours. Now that I've played it, I'm more impressed than ever at what the guys doing Gaslands Battle Reports have done with it. We're talking six cars that are getting through a full battle in an hour. That is some impressive gamesmanship. You got to be on your A game and you got to be whipping through this turn order like nobody's business. Uh, I don't know what they've edited out. Uh, as you can see, I haven't edited out a whole lot myself. And now, again, I haven't edited. I don't know how long these two episodes are going to be, but I want to have to break it up into two episodes of about 20 to 30 minutes a piece. That's a lot of game. There's a lot of value in this. And for a multiplayer game, I think it's great. Uh, I don't know, because the YouTube market is so saturated with Gaslands, I don't know how much more of this I'm going to play. To be honest with you, I mean, it's a great value for your gaming dollar. Um, for $12, I got a whole bunch of these great Car Wars-style post-apocalyptic cars. I already had the terrain for another game. The rules themselves are dirt cheap. Highly recommend this. If you got a squad of guys that you like to game with, by all means, pick it up. But, um, you know, we here at the Joy of Wargaming, we have a bit of the gamer ADD. Not going to lie to you. Uh, we do like to move on and try all kinds of different things. Generally, I try to do at least three battles of any rule set. Gives you a much better feel for what the rules are capable of. Uh, but for Gaslands, I think... If you're involved with Wargaming, if you're watching Wargaming YouTube on a regular basis, you know Gaslands. These battle reports are all over the place. Probably, I mean, just maybe it's the algorithm, but from everything I've seen, if you're not doing a Games Workshop game, this is the one that you're going to see a lot of through your feed. I don't know if Wargamers love it or if it's the YouTube algorithm, but somebody really likes Gaslands. And I like it too. It's a fun game, but it's not well suited for solo play. So I think we're probably pretty much done with it. Great game. Highly recommend it. But we're going to move on to some other quirky little oddball games. Maybe do a little more uh, On Guard. That's one that deserves a lot more videos than it has. I don't know. Stay tuned. You'll see more next time. And until next time, remember, war gamers, I'm praying for you.